What's going on guys? In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to do your timing. It's gonna be a basic video on how to set up your timing. Basically, it's gonna be aimed at those who uh, don't have a degree wheel or anything like that. It, we're just gonna be util utilizing the, the marks that are already there, um, whether they be engraved. Uh, some of them are engraved in, in certain parts of the motor. Um, and others are, are visually seen with a like a mark, sometimes like a pen mark or a paint mark that has been put on a specific spot on the motor. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. But in the future, I'm actually going to be doing another timing video where I'm gonna use a degree wheel and I'm gonna be doing that video on another motor. And that motor is this that you see, not here, but it's, it's gonna be on your screen right now. And it's gonna be going into this engine bay and I'm not gonna tell you what car this is until the video is for it actually come out. Um, but anyway guys, I hope you enjoy this video and we will see you now. Right now. You're gonna see me right now. I'm telling you how to do the timing. I'm not professional, or I am professional, but I'm unlicensed. Just remember that. Just remember that. Okay. Okay, so as they say, don't go in dry. So uh, we've lubed it up. Now we're just going to gently Hook it around, around the edge. I'm just going to push it, push it in. All right. So we've got this one up on here as well. And then we're just going to use a socket with an extension. Just give it some light taps. We're going to try and go in. Evenly, if we can. We want to get these seals in place without having it tear or get caught on anything. We coat both the seal and the camshaft in rubber grease. You can use a socket, but it's probably safer to use a blunt end of an extension bar. Fortunately, I installed these seals without damaging the rubber face. Just take your time and make sure that these are installed correctly and that the springs haven't fallen out of the seal. Now we're going to put our cam gears on. We've got our uh, cover with our timing marks here. So let's go ahead and put our let's go ahead and put our gears on. Now hold it there. This could be disaster if you're not paying attention. Notice the camshaft turned while I was tightening those gear bolts. Make sure you just nip them, because if you try and tighten them too much, you risk sending a valve into the top of the piston. We can't afford to damage any of these new parts, especially our new shiny forged pistons. Once the timing belt is on, that's when you can tighten these bolts up properly. Just be very careful doing this step. Rightio, now we're going to rotate each of the camshafts until they're lined up with the timing marks on the timing cover. All right? So we just grab the gear and we just turn until the tooth lines with the line. Excuse my head. Alright, now it does look slightly off for you, but uh, you have to take into account parallax error. If you don't know what it is, go Google it. So when I look straight on at the motor, those lines are in line. So I'll give you an idea. Now. Now we are looking at the motor straight on. Same thing here, straight on, right? So just just from my tripod, it's just sitting a bit higher than the angle you need to look at these. So now we're going to move on to the bottom one, the bottom timing mark, we're going to line that one up. Okay, so here we have a, a plate. I wasn't sure which way this goes on, but you can see it's kind of got a lip on the inside just here. 
So that sits against the crankshaft, so it will go this way. So the lip goes in first, like so. Don't forget your locating dowels. There's only one way this can go in because on one side it's got the timing mark, this little notch right here. It's got our location. So we'll put those in, line them up with the keyway. Now we've got our sewers in so we're all sweet. So our little keyway fell out. So we've got to be very careful about that. Let's not lose this fucking thing. Once you've pushed the sprocket on, use a hammer and an extension bar to tap the sprocket in place. Make sure the keys are in the keyways, it's pretty easy to lose one of these little suckers. If needed, apply a thin layer of lube to the crankshaft to help the sprocket slide on. Now with our sprocket in, we're going to wind the crankshaft nut all the way in. And just from looking at it, it's pretty close. It's almost dead on. So I'll show you guys in a second. And then we're just going to move it just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. So I'm looking at it straight on with you. Let's zoom in a little bit here. Now excuse my body swaying. But I'm looking at it dead on, it's like straight with the camera. It's almost perfect, almost. We want to move it a smidgen. And then that will mean that we've got our bottom or our pistons, crankshaft, cylinder number one for the piston at top dead center firing stroke. We've got our inlet cam gear, good, on point, timing mark done. And same thing with our exhaust cam gear so then from there we can whack the belt on after we put the, the tensions, tensioners and pulleys on but there's only two here and here so once they go on you can put the belt on come in now just to bring up a bit of tightness on this i'm just going to give it a bit of a knock now i can move it Right, so excuse my head once again, but I need to get in the right spot. This, a little bit too much. Okay, so you can see it's moved marginally. You could probably barely say, you, you could argue that it's barely moved, but I'm happy with that. So that's good. So we've got our bottom line marked, we've got our two top lines marked. So now we can put these idlers in, idle pulley in the idle tensioner, then we can put the belt on. Mint. Mint, fucking mint. Okay, so now that we've got everything lined up, we are going to put on our timing belt. The timing belt I'm using is a Gates Racing timing belt. Apparently their claim is that it's three times as strong as the OEM belts. No idea if that's true or whatever, but it's what we're going with. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put about half of the belt on at the bottom, make sure that the teeth are all in their grooves, slide this up, you know, because of direction of rotation, we want this side of the motor to be the tightest. So we need to make sure we can adjust this later. But we can just start it now. So we need to make sure that we get the belt fairly tight here. All right. And then we just trace it around. Try and keep half the belt off. It just helps you to get the belt on when we come to the next step. All right. So you keep tension here. Now, if you've got two people, or if you're more skilled than I am at doing this, uh, you can probably do it by yourself. 
uh, but so I'm going to wind this tensioner around right I'm going to take this out because I've got a bit, a bit more tension on it put it back in I'm going to wind it around to its fullest point right from here I'm going to get my elbow push my elbow down and now I've got to pull this belt over into the slots line the teeth up now you just want to make sure that you just get it on the edge of them all so now I've got it in right so now we just want to push everything in make sure that we uh, the belt doesn't slip or jump a tooth or anything like that all right so push the belt all the way on make sure it's nice seated let our tension go okay so now that's the belt on now this is loose you've got to keep this one loose you can lock this one up because this one doesn't adjust so now what we have to do is we get our allen key we've got a socket here for the allen key to go into so we're just going to put some tension on the belt now uh, when I say tension I don't mean fucking wring its neck at all right get our socket 14 mil sock now we just want to they say I'm pretty sure what they say is like to have um, I think it was like a quarter of a quarter of, def of deflection for your timing belt so that would be so a quarter is 90 or 90 degrees so a quarter of that is like what is that it's like 20 22 and a half i think or 20 degrees or whatever we'll just call it 15 fuck it right so as we get tired of the deflection as we pull this down the tensioner right puts tension on the belt and it makes it harder for us to so now i can do this and now putting tension on the belt tightens right so we're going to put it on i'll check i'll get my dad to check double check this later just to make sure but that looks about right so now we're going to lock it in position right so now now this won't move we're good to go looks good belt looks good it's in spot it's over the lines so that my friends is how we do the timing when you've completely taken your motor apart it's pretty simple you just got to make sure you'd be fucked if you didn't have these lines um you'd have to do it i'm sure there's another way to do it i don't know how that how you would but i'm sure there is a way um so without these marks you know you you'd, you'd be knee, knee deep in cow shit uh, but yeah, it's pretty easy. So just line this mark up, line that mark up, line this mark up. Make sure that you have it ballpark before you put the head on. Otherwise, you'll fucking, when you're turning this over to set these up, you send a valve or something into into the piston top or vice versa. So it's important to make sure that you're paying attention. Take your time when you do it. And then you'll be, you'll be sweet. And you'll be dropping skids for days. You'll be chopping V8s. Um, and you'll be... You'll be laughing mate. You'll be fucking laughing. Yeah. Fucking laughing. Alright guys, that is how you do it. It's pretty simple. Pretty fucking easy shit. You just line this mark up. This mark. You line some fucking mark down here. Put these idle tensioners on. Just chuck the belt on. And tighten the shit up. And you'll be right. Uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, all jokes aside guys, just take your time with it. Uh, you don't want to fuck it up because it is very important. Um, so just make sure that you're confident with these marks. They're the three most important things that you have to make sure that you do. Uh, because if one of them's out, then your motor's gonna run like shit. And if it's out a lot, then you could send uh, a valve into a piston head, which nobody wants. Um, and then the other thing too that's important is just make sure that you've got enough tension on the belt because if you don't, uh, if you've fucked something up and done it wrong, then 
guess what? The belt's going to jump a tooth and then you're going to have some slappy slappy again, which nobody wants. So, uh, I don't know what the fuck we're going to do for next episode, but whenever it comes, you'll know. Because I haven't thought that far ahead yet. Uh, but anyway, uh, as always, we will see you on the next one. We're going to see you on the next video. On the next one.